Let's see. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you this morning. There's nothing so precious as Jesus to me. Let her with this treasure be gone i am rich as can be when my savior i see oh i'm happy with jesus alone when sin fall and doom to a life of despair no light on my pathway to shine twas Jesus who found me and made me an heir to mentions of glory divine. Church, I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm so happy with Jesus alone, no poor and deserted, thank God I can say, oh, I'm happy with Jesus alone, should father and mother forsake me below my bed on earth be a stone I'll claim to my Savior who loves me I know oh I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm so happy with Jesus alone. Church, I'm happy with Jesus alone. No poor and deserted, thank God I can say. Oh, I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm so happy with Jesus alone. Church, I'm happy with Jesus alone. No poor and deserted, thank God. I can say, oh, I'm happy with Jesus alone. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day he died on Calvary's cross. Save all the lost. I know it was the blood for me. How good the Lord is. And the blood has power. It still has power. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood as he prayed in the garden. 
that dripped from his head as he had a thrombosis. Praying to God the Father, let this cup be moved. No one would watch with him, not even an arm. Ah, the blood that came from the thorns put around his head, dripped down his face, behind his ears, his back of his head. The blood, uh, when they whipped him all night long, the blood all over his back. She was scourged time after time. The blood, the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. The blood on Calvary's cross. The cruelest form of execution there is. Take a man and nail him to a cross. Hands nailed. Feet nailed. And the weight of his body pressing down on that nail in his feet and pulling that nail in his hand and then to pierce him in the side. Well, there's power in the blood. And I plead the blood of Jesus right now for every listener, every viewer, those who are listening by way of phone conference and those who are viewing by way of live streaming, I plead the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over your house, over your family, over your body. As I got up this morning and thought about children in Egypt where the angel passed over. People call it the death angel, but it was not a death angel. It was just an angel. But every householder was not marked with the blood, experience death. Uh, and I'm praying for your house. That there be no death. That there be no death, not by way of what we're calling the coronavirus, not by way of heart attack, stroke, cancer. I'm praying that there be no death in your house this day. That God Almighty will continue to grant you life. And that you'll take this day to give glory to him. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. But we are nothing without him. I don't know about you, but I tell folk every day, if it wasn't for the Lord, what would I be? I, I really don't know. What would I be when I look in my family tree and those around me, my friends, I know that I could have been anything. Could have been punked out, drunk out, whored out, doped out, uh, jailed to death. But God has been so good. God has been so good. He, he, he has been so good to keep me. And I pray to him daily, Lord, don't turn me over to myself. Don't turn me over to myself. I don't practice good self-control. I don't have... Uh, good breaks on my life. I don't have a good emergency stop system. And if you turn me over to myself, then I'll run out of life quickly. But I thank him for 68 years. He's led me in the right path for his namesake. Not for my namesake, but for his namesake. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm less than a, a filthy rag. I'm, I'm nothing but dust. I'm nothing uh, but a person born in uh, sin and shaped in iniquity. But for his name's sake, because he wanted me where I am today in this very spot. Uh, this is happening right now. He let me live on and he kept me and kept me reasonably presentable. And I thank him for being so good and kind. Thank him for the wife uh, that he gave me who told me to put on this uh, white shirt and red tie today and 
he told me to put the coat on. Well, I did because I want to stay here. And she's a country girl, you know. Them country girls, they boil grits and stuff. You don't go to bed with them mad with you. So uh, I've been up most of um, the night, and I plan to go to bed after the 10 o'clock uh, worship hour. So I thought I'd better put it on. It's really hot, though. It's really, really, really hot. Thank all of you for being with us. Uh, I do uh, see some names up here, over 60 of them. I won't try to uh, call them. Um, listen, get your hymn book. And, and sometimes you need to just sing some hymns. Just, if you can't sing them, just read them. Uh, this has been so comforting. To me, doing this, uh, what are we, uh, quarantine, yeah. It's, the, the hymn book has just been a super, super blessing to me as I've gone over uh, old hymns. I remember I used to sing that uh, hymn, I'm happy with Jesus alone so much. I hadn't sung it in a long time, but during this quarantine, I've been flipping through and reading different books and what have you. Get your hymn book and read your hymn book from time to time. I know it's Sunday school and I'm going to get to it, but also get a Bible and read it sometime. I know that doesn't sound right talking to church folk or Christians, but many of us uh, fail to read the Bible. Uh, my daddy started every morning uh, reading his Bible, and I would be telling him about different books I read, he says, one thing to read a lot of books about the Bible, it's another thing to read the Bible. So in all your reading, uh, son, you need to read uh, the Bible some. All right, well, God bless you, and um, good morning again. And um, to our superintendent, um, Superintendent um, Holmes, uh, to our teachers, and we have some wonderful, wonderful teachers um, Sister Moon, Sister Dorothea Hood, Brother Spivey, Brother Monte Marble, I love to hear. Uh, Sister Davis, uh, Brother and Sister Nichols, uh, Little Brother Greenleaf. Um, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. Uh, Sister Brenda Daniels and Brother Bolton, they have a class there. I'm trying to see each class in my mind. Well, anyway. Uh, got good teachers, wonderful superintendent, and that's not easy in this day and time. Most people care little or nothing about a systematic Sunday morning study of the word. Uh, Sunday school, like BTU, seem to be fading further and further out of the picture these days of church, and much of church has become just uh, folk coming not to participate in the uh, service or not to uh, add to the service, but what they can get. It's like, please me, make me feel good, and uh, I'll come back next Sunday. And uh, they, they're not interested in gaining any spiritual knowledge. Uh, they're not interested in uh, being lifted in any kind of way other than the visual and their audio uh, senses, uh, what they see on the big screens and uh, the whole big backboards now. And um, well, anyway, you need to get in a class. You need to get in a class, get in a class, get in a class. It will bless your life. Then you have people close to you. Uh, those uh, New Bethel uh, members that are in Sunday school classes, whenever they're sick or hurting and stuff, I know right away. Because somebody in their Sunday school class is going to tell me immediately. Other folk just walk in, walk out. Uh, many times they get sick and you don't know what happened to them. They just kind of fade on back. So please, please get in Sunday school. Uh, you may not understand everything about it. I've really had a fight with this lesson uh, all uh, week long. And I've consult consulted uh, my son, Conridge. I consulted Deacon uh, Levi, who gave me some good advice. He said, well, it's about 
uh, joy and happiness. And if you tell the difference in that, you'll nail the Sunday school lesson. Uh, so thank you, uh, Brother uh, Levi. The lesson is about the return of joy. And uh, that nomenclature has been uh, tacked to it. Um, and uh, that's what kind of makes the lesson a little difficult there uh, because they return it before they leave. Uh, but anyway, they did leave indeed, and they did return. And uh, so uh, you take between Zechariah and Zephaniah, you can get the whole picture. Um, well, next week we'll be on Zechariah, but in preparation for this lesson, one of the things I had to do first uh, was get all my facts uh, together on uh, Zechariah. And uh, I don't even see my note sheet anymore. But anyway, I needed to do that uh, so that uh, we could get the whole message here today. What did I do with my good notes? But anyway, we need to know that uh, Zephaniah uh, was a contemporary of Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, um, that uh, Zechariah uh, was with Haggai and Malachi. Uh, Zechariah, um, well, uh, he got a chance to uh, see some of this prophecy through and uh, see what happens after the return and the full restoration. Zephaniah and many in that group, uh, contemporaries of Jeremiah, who Jeremiah was one led off into uh, captivity under Nebuchadnezzar, uh, they would uh, trust God uh, for what would take place. And that's what I'm going to tell you right now. You got to trust God for what is going to take place. Everybody's trying to say how we're going to come out of this. Well, we might not come out of it. Uh, not here on earth. Um, this will impact us from uh, now on. Uh, I would think as long as uh, earth is here, uh, our lives will be changed. Uh, we got to find either a new way to do some of the old things we've been so used to doing and was so common to us, or we got to find some new things to do, period. Uh, that some old things will just pass away and uh, be no more. Uh, but uh, the truth is, thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm here to assure you that the will of God is going to be done. The kingdom is going to come. Do you believe that right now? That the kingdom of God is going to come. Well, Zephaniah tells us of the Lord's day and all the things entailed in the Lord's day, how he's going to turn the world upside down, inside out, and make it right. And here we are. We are in the midst of something where uh, everything is upside down and inside out. Uh, we we, 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 we got to find a new way to do the old things we're doing or find better things to do. But many of our practices, our daily practices, who would have thought you'd be told stay at home uh, in a free country, in the, in the land, <laughs> land of the free and home of the brave? You, you'd be told stay at home. Who would have thought uh, no baseball? I saw a little uh, member of mine uh, on Facebook earlier this morning uh, regretting that he didn't get a chance to play his last baseball games. I said, man, I didn't know you played. I've been glad to come see you. Baseball is my uh, favorite sport of all sports, and uh, I, I love it so, so much, and I miss it. I miss it uh, from being played right now. And who knows if it ever, look at basketball, just going out to wonder. Um, and football trying to be hopeful, but who knows what. Uh, but we do know that God is in control. He's in charge. He, he, everything is in his plan, not his second, third, fourth plan, uh, A, B, or C plan. No, uh, when you read Job, uh, you'll find out 
that God planned everything from before he made the foundations of the world. And uh, it's just going through. And uh, what streets you're born on, where you're born at will make so much difference uh, where you place you at for your experience through life. Uh, but we're thankful that God is indeed God all by himself. Now, in the introduction, they do talk about discontent and unhappiness. And I told you from uh, the book uh, that God Weeps uh, by Joni and uh, her partner. Um, well, I can't think of his name now. But anyway, uh, one of the things they said that Americans have what they don't want and want what they don't have. Therefore, they're always disturbed, upset, mad. They're always unhappy uh, because they uh, don't have these things or got what they uh, don't want or shouldn't have or whatever. But uh, you don't have to live that way. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to be um, discontent and unhappy. Our message um, last Sunday was on the uh, Constrained by his love. There's nothing more powerful than the love of God. There's nothing more powerful than love, period. If you want to build strong relationship, show people that you love them before you try to show them you're smarter than they are. Show your children. Show, show your spouse. Uh, show that you love them, and, and you'll see a great change. Uh, you'll see a great change in attitude and whatnot. Love is the powerful thing, how good the Lord is. Praise his holy name. Somebody trying to call me again, and people do that, but I'm sorry I can't do that. Uh, all right, and it throws me off. Uh, but love is more powerful than anything in the world. Uh, I think you've heard me tell the story before about a mother who was called to the school day after day, week after week, month after month about her son messing up. And one day, instead of going to the office and whipping him right in the office, she stood there and cried. And he said, Mother, Mother, what's wrong? She said, I, you just hurt me so bad. And he said, Mother, I didn't, I didn't know you loved me enough uh, for me to hurt you. I know you hurt me often. You tear me up right here in the office with a paddle or a belt. He said, but I'll make it up to you. I'll make it up to you. And he got a board and he filled that board with nails, one end to the other, board almost two feet long. He drilled nails in it until you couldn't get another one in there. And he gave it to his mother. He said, Mother, now every time I do something good, I want you to take a nail out. And so soon there was no more nails in the board. And he came back to the mother. She still had a tear in her eye. And he said, what's wrong, mother? The board is empty. She said, yeah, but the holes are still there. Uh, well, that's the strength of love. Jesus died on the cross for us. Uh, the holes are still there. You can ask Thomas. He told Thomas, if you got to, put your, hole, put your finger in the holes in my hand. Put your hand in my side. But love is so powerful. Glory, hallelujah that we can be saved by the fact that he loved us so much. The cords of love that is what held him on the cross, not the nails. The nails uh, wouldn't be able to hold him. But we are discontent and unhappy because uh, we want what we don't have and we have what we don't want. And we need to get out of that. And the way out is to focus on God himself. Uh, just think about what God does for you every day, all day, every day. <sighs> That's God, my friend. Every day we're batting our eyes. Every day, every day. That's, that's, that's God. Our heart is pumping and thumping. That's God. God is doing great things for you every day. But you want to Mercedes because you got a Cadillac and you want to Cadillac because you got a Chevrolet and you want a 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 if you're single, you want to be married. If you're married, you, well, yeah. Okay. But anyway, you need to come to that state of life that is joy. Joy that God giveth and only God giveth. Now, happiness is one thing, and it's built up on circumstances and situation, and none of it lasts long. You go and buy a new set of clothes, make you real happy. Uh, but then you got to go get another one to feel that same feeling. Get a new car, a new house, uh, go to sporting events or whatnot. You're just happy for the moment. But if you could get to that blessed state of life, if you could get there, uh, the life that Jesus talked about when he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the pure in heart. When he said those kind of things, that's, that's not a momentary situation. That's a state of life. And what Zephaniah promises to the people that God, in the restoration of his kingdom, you will know his presence. And when you know that God is present, oh, hallelujah, somebody ought to be shouting about that. Somebody ought to be able to testify with me that if you can just know God is present, it means everything. It means the whole thing. When you can know that God is present. Somebody say, how you deal with that? Well, I got the presence of God. Well, I'll tell you like this. I went to the hospital. I had two deacons in the hospital at the same time uh, many, many years ago. Uh, remember, I've had six churches before this one. But these two deacons were in the hospital. And I went in. And both had cancer. And I said to one, I'm going to pray for you. He, I ain't scared. I, oh, I'm tough. I've been in the uh, Korean conflict and I've kicked me and got off my feet. Doctor telling me have, I got cancer. It ain't worrying me. It ain't bothering me. Uh, you can pray if you want to pray. And I tried to whisper a little prayer with him. And I went to the next bed, to the next deacon. And I said, brother, I'm going to pray with you. He said, thank you. He said, but don't pray for my healing because I already got it. And I'm looking at this man being cooked uh, in that radiation, his neck and everything, looking all burned up, his hair falling out. I said, he's saying he healed? He said, God uh, has already healed every saint. Anytime you're a child of God, you're healed. Uh, now, I can get a temporary, yeah, Yes, yes, healing here, but my real healing is over yonder, and I'm just going toward my healing. I can get this old body cranked up for a minute, or I can let it go on and get my new body in heaven. So, but I'm already healed as a child of God. I want you to know something right now. It's already done. It is already done. Can you hear me? It is already done. Yes, it is. The, 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 the kingdom, uh, yeah, uh, indeed will be restored. Uh, the kingdom indeed will uh, have in it the temple, the kingdom. Oh, glory, hallelujah. The kingdom, and that would be Jerusalem, the temple, the, the mountains of Zion. It all be there, and the people will know and understand that God is present with us. We were in exile. And even when we were here, Zephaniah told us you just didn't do nothing but ritual and ceremony. And you had no idea of the presence of God. You were just burning lambs and rams and doves and going through the motion. Uh, but you had no idea of his presence. And it comes out in your behavior that you didn't have his presence. But when the kingdom is restored, you will know his presence. And somebody can testify, I mean, with the presence of God, you can go through anything. I remember walking in the room of a saint uh, who was terminally ill, and she was so upbeat. She was so upbeat. And I told her, so you've actually lifted me. 
I came in to hope to lift you, but you've actually lifted me. See, so Reverend, this is nothing because God is with me. He's with me here. He's with me at home. He's with me at church. But he's with me. And since he's with me, nothing else really matters. I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. Do you know he's with you? If you can't feel his presence, steal away. Get by yourself and have a talk with him. It's got to be tough trying to go through this world uh, and try to know who's your friend and who's your enemy. And I tell the Lord all the time, Lord, show me my friends on the one hand, my enemy on the other hand. Don't let me think a friend is an enemy. And please don't let me think an enemy is a friend. Uh, teach me what to say, when to say it, and teach me who to say it to. Let me know when to be quiet because there are people out uh, to hurt us every day. There are people out to make things hard for us every day. But when you have the presence of God, if you could have his divine presence, then you know things will be all right. Well, I got to leave you. I got to get ready for our 10 a.m. worship service. But I do thank God for the return of joy. I thank him for joy. And I want to say to you, whatever going through, you can still have joy. So we've been made, and that's optional. It's, you know, not definite. We've been made and do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. God bless you. And I do pray that we'll be able to assemble again. A young lady was telling me the other day, said, no, that's probably not going to happen. It's going to be the new way uh, from now on. Um, and the people who really want to give, go and give, so don't, don't, don't worry about it. I said, yeah, but it's still not church. Oh, Lord, Embers, it's, it's still not church. Uh, you getting it by way of television, by way of internet, by way of conference call, but it's not church because one of the words, a New Testament word for church, the word kononia means fellowship. And to have fellowship, you got to be in the same ship. You can get along with anybody. You don't have to see them. You know. But when you got to deal with people, when you got to mix with people, that's when you know your love, you know your strength of your love. Uh, so we are praying that uh, we soon can come back together. I think at this point we were planning one time for the second Sunday, and then we were planning for the third Sunday, and now we're told to be after the 28th. Uh, so perhaps we'll be planning now for the first Sunday in June. Uh, but whenever, whenever, and uh, we'll continue to try to connect with you as much as possible. God bless you. Listen, have a great day. Come back with us at um, 10 o'clock in the same place. Come back with us for our um, morning uh, worship, 10 o'clock today. We're going to be talking about um, focusing on God or on um, See the rainbow. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it. See the rainbow. Uh, don't worry about the clouds, the thunder, the lightning. See the rainbow. All right. God bless you.